Good evening and welcome to Scotts Valley High School, the site of the 2016 Santa Cruz Coast Athletic League Wrestling Championships. It's going to be a night of great drama. I'm Rusty Reed. Pat Lovell will bring it to you tonight. And, uh, but before they take to the mat, we got a pretty good uh, team battle here. Yeah, we do. Uh, Aptos is leading the uh, tournament right now. They have uh, 119 points. Harbor, of course, we knew was going to be tough. Uh, have 110 and a half. San Lorenzo Valley is in uh, third place, and they have 88 points. And right behind them is Scotts Valley with 83 and a half. So that's a close battle for that third and fourth spot. And SoCal is number seven with 45, and Santa Cruz is number six with uh, 42 points. So we got a total of total of 95. JV and varsity wrestlers participating today. Uh -huh. So only nine points, the difference of the team. Now here we go with 113. Out of Aptos, it's Evan Carrillo and Jeremiah Aguirre of San Lorenzo Valley as they get set to tangle for three two-minute periods. Here we go. A referee on this match is Mike Carr. Mike Carr is a former Fremont High School wrestler and wrestled at Humboldt State. He's probably done 20 to 25 state high school wrestling championships. One of the best uh, referees in the country right now. They've been wrestling all day. Preliminaries and semifinals have been going since 2, 3 o'clock this afternoon. The start notice, time tonight, 8 o'clock. You notice in the finals too, Rusty, that we use two, two officials. Is that a takedown by Aguirre there of SLV? Two point yeah, takedown? Beautiful double leg takedown there by, by Aguirre. That was real nice. Great shot. Great man for home move this way. Let's go, Evan, what time is going to stand up now and break free from Aguirre? And in the end of that, Aguirre brings him back down in the bottom neck. Looking at half now. He's that half is trying to turn him and then they, uh, they're out of bounds. Excellent crowd here tonight. We're at Scotts Valley High School and uh, both sides of the gym about full. So loud and full here at, <laughs> at Scotts Valley. Athletic Director Louis Walters hosting this event. Yeah, Louis, uh, Scotts Valley has always been very hospitable to, to the SCCAL and letting, letting us have and putting on our events here. Uh, basketball championships next week, uh, uh, Wednesday and Thursday here at Scotts Valley. And of course, Freddie Cortez as well, uh, uh, the head coach at, at Scotts Valley Wrestling, a lot to do with putting on this show. Still 2 nothing. SLV with the nod. Carrillo, Carrillo is working hard on that stand up to try and break away from Aguirre. Aguirre's got that tight waist right on him. And then you got that near arm broken down. He's working, working real hard uh, trying to keep him down there. But Carrillo's not giving up. He's, he's still fighting it all the way. There they go out of bounds. For the championship at 113 pounds in Santa Cruz Coast Athletic League. Six teams in the league with wrestling teams. Rio again with a good stand up. Aguirre lifting. Brings him back down to the mat with some good force. Here's Aguirre trying for his tilt. He's got that cheap tilt on. Tried to work the cheap tilt with, on the roll through. Couldn't quite, couldn't quite hold it. 15 seconds left in this match. Oh, 16. Score two to nothing in favor of Aguirre. Second period? Uh, yeah, no, first, we're still in the first period. Okay. Oh, well, he finally got away. Nice. He just kept working at it and working at it. Finally got his stand up and was able to get a seat. it. There goes Aguirre in on a nice single leg single leg that he wasn't able to finish it. We lost time and now we're going into the second round, Rusty. They wrestle three, three two-minute rounds. Yeah. <laughs> three two-minute rounds. 
Kenny Polist, Polist, Palestrini, the head coach at San Lorenzo Valley High School. Todd Kraft, his assistant. And here with another nice leg, leg tackle there, nice single leg, trying to get Creel, and he's got Creel hip down. But Creel's not giving up here. Who, who's got who? Nobody has, has the other one yet. They're probably in a stalemate situation. A nice move. Nice move by uh, by Kareel to work out of there. Uh, Gary was coming up behind him and he was able to get out of there. Aguirre in the red and black. One point lead, two to one. A minute and a half to go in the second period. Aguirre's working hard. Gary was working hard on that. On those leg takedowns. He's really working. Got him, got him now. He's got the whole play. Evan Cabrillo, Carrillo wrestling for head coach Reggie Roberts, Ramon Zacharias, an assistant, a long list of assistants at Aptos. Great program going on over there right now. Yeah, Gary's got, got a tough, really tough ride. He's got that tight waist ride. Going for the half now, he's driving that half. He's trying to get Carrillo over, but I think is too strong for him. Uh, these guys are both Let's see what year are they, Rusty? Boy, I got a. Uh, I don't know. I have oh, to look oh, here. It is. Uh, yeah, Carrillo is a is a tenth grader, and uh, Gary is a eleventh grader. So a good matchup here. Really, uh, really competitive. Gary now leading four to one. Gets that high lift, high lift on, on Carrillo as he's trying to get out of there. Carrillo, I keep wanting to say Carrillo. Yeah. I was here for about 40 of them. <laughs> 10 seconds in the period. Working on the edge, I'll tell you. A Gary, four to one lead here. Ten seconds to go in the second of three periods. Carrillo's giving him all he wants. And you know, I don't know if you saw this, Rusty, but Gary was the league champion last year at this weight class. So he's a re returning champion. Currently ranked eighth in CCS. That's a pretty good ranking. Take the bottom, take the bottom on the third period. So Gary's on the bottom and uh, Carrillo's on top. Well, that's a handful for Carrillo when you know you're going against the returning league champion who won it as a sophomore. Very impressive. But Carrillo, a little bit marching back, two to four. Yeah, if he can turn a jury here, get some points there, it would be good, but I don't know if he's going to be able to do that. You got these guys are really pretty even in that. Oh, nice landing roll. Beautiful landing roll there by Jerry. That was worth a reverse on the near fall. That was a nice move. So that gave him two points. He's up six to two now with a minute and a half to go in the match. There he goes. Now he's going with a cheap tilt. But uh, Carrillo is out of bounds, so he didn't get any points on that. He does a nice job with those tilts. He comes up through the crotch and takes your arm and then rolls right over on his own back and pulls you right through. So he does a real nice job with it. Six to two now with a minute 17 in the third. Aguirre with the lead. Looks like conference over at the scorer's table. Yeah, it looks like there's a question on what the, what the proper score is. Uh, yeah, eight, eight to two, that's correct. With the two point, two point reversal and two point near fall, that puts the jury up eight to two with 117 left for third period.
really works on top uh, to try and get a, a fall, a near fall. He really works, works hard, keeps that tight waist on. There he goes with a two kill. He got it this time. He got two more points, a near fall. Uh, 10 to 10 to 2. 45 seconds left. And he's riding him tough. Both these wrestlers are on to CCS, the finalists, both advance, first and second place. He really tried to switch on that, the switch didn't work. Couldn't quite finish it. Here again, that tight move. Clock not on Correo's side, 25 seconds to go. A pin is his only hope. Yeah, he's riding, riding real tough. He's got that wrist line. There he slapped that half on. He's trying to grind him with that half. But Correo is smart enough to get out of bounds. Seconds, Rusty left. And here, to get that far ankle race. Takes him right back down on the mat, trying his tilt. He's really working hard on top, I'll tell you. The winner is Jeremiah Aguirre for the second year in a row champion of the Santa Cruz Coast Athletic League. How about that? Very impressive. Very, very much. Very, uh, very well controlled match. Both wrestlers wrestled, wrestled very hard. Uh, there was no, uh, <laughs> no downtime. That's the kind of matches the referee really likes to, likes to referee, you know. When the, both the kids are just working their tails off to get better and so forth. Real quick, uh, we're going to tell you our sponsors bringing you this match tonight. Aptos Sports Club. Craft Body Shop, KP Construction, and Greg Lopez. As now we move on to the 120 pounders, Gabriela Sandoval, Scotts Valley, and Marcus Dong of Santa Cruz. This is our first uh, female wrestler tonight, Rusty. In, like in the ready. dark singlet. Yeah, ready to go. Marcus Dong, only a freshman. Again, we're at 120 pounds. It's our third weight class of the night. They're kind of just sparring out there, kind of feeling each other out to see what's going to work here. Oh, there goes Dong with a nice duck under. A nice duck under into a single, but uh, Sandoval was able to get out of there. There he goes, uh, Dong towards the two point takedown. Nice move. Gabby was in the finals last year and here in Santa Cruz Coast Athletic League Finals as a freshman and I lost that match, but second in league, went on to CCS. She's currently ranked number one in CCS. Gabby Sandoval. Don is working hard and trying to turn in. They just uh, warned Don for stalling on top. Trying to work that three-quarter Nelson that didn't work for him. He doesn't have double wrist ride, he's riding, riding her pretty tough. Sandoval has a great record this year. She's a lot of tournaments and stuff. And, you know, she's going to be a real force at the uh, at the girl CCS tournament. Well, she's the number one seed at CCS, so she could very well be the champ and on to state. Yeah. Second place finisher at the Peninsula Invitational, the 
Weber Lawson JV tournament. She came in second and first at the Trojan Wrath tournament. Yeah, and, and Scotts Valley has had a great tradition of female wrestlers. The girls from here are doing very well. Uh, one of the girls now dressing up Simon Fraser University up in Canada. And uh, she was just uh, nailed. She was national champion, uh, CCS champion, state champion. Uh, she didn't win our league though. <laughs> ah. Man, that's piercing. Yeah. Yeah, you certainly know when the end of the periods come about. So after one, two to nothing. So it's tight. Again, Marcus Dong, only a freshman. Part of that big comeback of the Santa Cruz team. Yeah, that was a really a great story, the way Santa Cruz uh, put that team together so late in the season and got a coach. And, uh, uh, Emiliano Aragon, the head coach at Santa Cruz, and assisted by Cody Kiff. That should, have been, that should have been two, two points and two points. I think uh, they were standing up. I don't know if they were contesting the, the call on the edge of the mat because her feet were still in. As long as your supporting points are still in, your opponent's out of bounds. You still score points. So I don't know why why the referee didn't score that, because Dong I threw the headlock and he got two and two on that. Oh, well, I guess, yeah, I guess he got two and two. And then uh, when she came out of there, he gave her an escape, but it looked to me like she had another possibility of another two points for a takedown on the edge there. As it stands, four to one on the scoreboard. We're halfway through their match. It's a minute and a half. To, well, actually, I keep thinking the matches are three minutes or each period, but it's only a two minute period. Yeah, two minute period, yeah. There you go. Nice shot. Nice shot by, uh, by Sandoval. Uh, trying to get that double. Ron's working on it. We're going to try and lift, lift for a trip there, nice, nice try by Sandoval. You just got to remember, don't let her, don't let her head get up there too far in the ground. You can set it up for a headlock. She's trying to work that lateral drop cow catcher from the front there, Don is strong enough to fight that off. Referee calls a stalemate, they'll both be up standing again with 42 seconds left. Now she'll wrestle in CCS and in state against all girls, is all that girls, correct? Yeah, so after this is all girls, yeah. So it's a lot uh, <coughs> more fair. Yeah, I mean the, the, the competition here has yeah. just got to be amazing for her. Yeah. That's, you know, going against guys. Good honor. We have a number, a number of girl wrestlers in this tournament. And at the varsity level, too, you know. It isn't a JV tournament or, or whatever. Four to one, still the score. There it goes, another nice shot by Sandoval. She just, just can't quite penetrate far enough. Dong's trying to kind of set her up for that headlock. You watch, it, watch his right arm. As she gets her head up high, you'll see his right arm start to come across. He's trying to set her, but she's not pushing into him hard enough for him to throw that headlock. You certainly have some strength in the way you the way she moves, you can tell. Five seconds, in second period. Dong is in on that. He didn't quite have the single leg. I thought he had a single leg. So Santa Cruz last year had three wrestlers out on the t for the team last year. 
three. Yeah. Now they have ten. Emiliano Aragon coaching ten of them. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Pretty bad last year. They just, just couldn't get it together. Anthony Avala was on the team. Santa Cruz, Ryan Falcon, Demetrius Gallegos, Rene Aguilara, and Deanna Aguilara, who are brother and sister, Damian Dahera, and Isaac Marquez make up the Santa Cruz team. Dong's on top now, riding tough, working on Sandoval, Sandoval's neck. got penalized the point there, I think it was red. That would, that would be Santa Cruz. The dog got penalized. In that cross, in that cross body line, the, the, she just came along the bottom with the kick, kick shot. So Dong and Sandoval duking it out. 54 seconds to go in the match. Four to four on the reversal by Dong. Dong only a freshman. Again, we're wrestling at 120 pounds. See what she does here. Dong tried to stand up. She dropped the stand up really well. Dong can't afford to get his head, head down and let her get that half. Oh, she got the cross body line. Long trying to step over, that's not a smart move. He's trying to crank that half. 25 seconds. He's working hard with that half, trying to get that half. Is it all defense for Dawn right now? Yeah, yeah Dawn, but she got her hip in now. She can, she can screw out on that, on that cross body line. Pick up some points. He was just going into a great guild team in position like that. So now we're going to go overtime. Uh, overtime here would be a minute. At, at this period, overtime, the other score is there. Then they have two, uh, if it's still tied in, we go to two seven seconds here. And it's, it's sudden death, first to get a sudden point? Sudden death, the first one, yeah. Gabby Sandoval and Marcus Dong here at 120 pounds. Scotts Valley and Santa Cruz representative. Santa Cruz Dong in the red. Scotts Valley in the dark. One minute overtime period. Out of bounds. Well, this match has got everybody on the feet. Oh, she got it! She got the takedown on the double! Oh, oh! Gabby Sandoval, Santa Cruz Ghost Athletic League Champion. That's our first, first SCCA World Champion, female champion. First in the history of the league. What a great match. What a great double A takedown. That was terrific. That young lady's going places. Again, number one seed in CCS. Wow, that was a great match. Marcus Dong also going to CCS, being a finalist here in the league championships, and he only a freshman. That's the one thing that we have in the SCCAL is we only have, uh, because of our the way we show in CCS, we only get two qualifiers. So if somebody has not wrestled, number two and number three have not wrestled in the tournament, we have wrestled as tomorrow, it's 
is called a true second because we would like our best our best wrestlers to go uh, to CCS. If we do well there, we can end up getting a third qualifier, which would be really good. So here we move on to 126 pounds. Our fourth match of the night from Scotts Valley, it's Raul Ortiz, a junior. And from San Lorenzo Valley, we've got Wyatt Attachley, and he's a sophomore. Yeah, Ortiz didn't wait it, didn't waste any time on that. He went right in and got that double leg takedown, took him down, in control now, working his opponent back down to the mat, and working him hard. So again, Wyatt Attachley is uh, trying, is in the dark singlet. He's on top right now. Roll, or, no, roll oh no, again. it's our Scotts Valley. It's Scotts Valley is the dark. <laughs> That's got right. that double wrist ride again. Tight waist. Leading two to nothing in the first period with 40 seconds to go. Trying to work that arm bar, he's getting a little bit high there. You want to be careful, you don't want to get too, up, too high when your opponent is still on his knees. You want to, you want to stay back a little bit. You look like he's trying to work the near side cradle here. You can't tell from our angle, but it looks like he's got it, he's got it pretty tight. You got to make a head, head and ear adjustment here. Coach Paul Screeny and Todd Kraft out there. Two of the greatest gentlemen from the San Lorenzo Valley. Kraft family and Kraft's body shop have been great supporters of wrestling over the year. All the kids wrestled. Their dad tried to wrestle, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he got he got beat up pretty good, so he, he uh, those kids got him pretty good, I think. And the Scotts Valley coach, again, Freddie Cortez and Ken Kennegard as assistant. And uh, they've got their representatives out there right now at 126 pounds. Only eight seconds to go in this first period. Two to nothing. The one take to Second period, here we go. Two to nothing in favor of Ashley. Okay, there's a nice shot by Ashley there. Oh, nice counter. Nice counter, leg counter there by Ortiz. Oh, Ortiz is looking at him. Move the, the banana split if he can step through here. Called a stalemate, I think. Their official felt that neither one of them was gaining any uh, great position, so called a stalemate. Again, White attached Lee in the red and black and white singlet. Ortiz for Scotts Valley in the Mostly, I guess it's maroon, but it's hard to tell with the lighting, which is nice and dramatic. I love the lighting. Yeah. It adds a lot to it, you know. It does. They deserve to build that drama Ooh, for an event there's, like this. There's no Dashi trying to headlock. Oh, he's got Ortiz. He's got it tight. He got his takedown now. Now the official's looking for near fall. He's past 45. He starts counting that near fall. To get that real tight, boy. Oh, oh, we're keeping almost out of it. Almost turned out of it. And actually, got that thing really 
tight, boy. That's when you saw him screaming her in the air. That's our first fall in the United Actually, of uh, Scott Valley. So there you have it with the pin, Wyatt Attachley, or Scott, and Raul Ortiz. down there by my dear Zacharias from uh, uh, Dominic and Gary from Santa uh, Rosa Valley. This will be a good match. A very competitive match. A very looking to escape here. These guys are going round and round here. Dominic Aguirre is the twin brother of Jeremiah Aguirre. He's already a winner, a league champion here. They're both juniors. Just got a nice double leg takedown on Zacharias. Dominic Aguirre did. That was a nice double leg takedown. Moved the match two to nothing. One point escape there for There's Zachariah. Zachariah's got Aguirre's leg up trying to work for a takedown on him. There he goes, two point takedown off that single leg. Up, up three to two now with 39 seconds to go. This will be a really a very competitive match because Zacharias is ranked number two in CCF. He has a 20 and 5 record this year, so he's a real uh, Three points on the board on that. Geo being pushed on by the giant Aptos contingent here at Scotts Valley High School. Geo Zacharias. Dominic Aguirre ranked 12th in his own right in CCS. That's not fair when a uh, team like Santa Cruz will bring the whole team in a Volkswagen <laughs> and uh, Aptos needs four muscles. Yeah. And Zacharias trying to keep him in bounds here. He's got that single leg and he keeps his toes in. You notice he does that because you can still score as long as you have your toes in on the map. When your opponent's out of bounds and you're in a controlled position, you still score points off that. Zacharias up six to two early in the second of three periods. Oh, a nice, nice head shot and a nice arm throw and follow through the kickdown. That was, that was two really, really nice advanced moves that Zacharias did there. Oh, he's got that arm bar, arm bar across here. Oh, just. Still in control. Still in control and down they go. I think uh, I think of Gary Gary hit his head, I think, when they when they came down. I think he hit his head, so they'll have a, an injury timeout now. Gary trying to join 
His brother Jeremiah is, Jeremiah is a league champion. Again, I mentioned both twin brothers, Jeremiah and Dominic, at San Lorenzo Valley High School. Juniors, they'll both be going to CCS regardless. But Gary, if he can come back from this, I don't know if it was a head injury or a shoulder. I think he came down on his head, I think. And well, the it, trainer, uh, Carolyn Walker, the trainer here at Scotts Valley, is out on the mat, and Carolyn will make a decision. If she thinks it's something that has to do with a concussion or something, she'll have him stop the match and get him to the doctor. Well, again, congratulations to Raul Ortiz, who won the 126-pound match right before this one with our first pin of the night. Everything has been in decision, but uh, Ortiz with the pin, the junior, the league champ. Ortiz, a boxer as well. In fact, I've uh, been talking to some of the coaches, a lot of these uh, kids have bought, well, not a lot, but some have boxed and, and uh, it helps with the footwork. Yeah. So Gary is back on his feet. And I guess he's okay. He's good. There. Ready to go. All right. Bottom position. And Gary in the red and black. Zacharias in the blue with the eight to two lead. Zacharias is that great line. He's got a cross body right on him now. And the bacon down the line. Just one step ahead of him most of the way. Oh, he's cranking with that half. He's really cranking that half. That's a painful, painful position. It's when your forehead gets to meet your knees. Zacharias champion in two tournaments this year, the Jim Root and the Dawn to Dusk. There's Zacharias with a potentially dangerous goal. Probably took the half a little bit too far. The, the, the bottom rusher couldn't turn, so the referee stopped it. That was safety. Our other two. Oh, dangerous situation here. Back to last. Upside down backwards. He's scoring near fall point. I guess not. I guess the referee was showing that there was no control of what he was doing. Our other two officials tonight, Nate Urbancic is a longtime uh, resident of Santa Cruz in and uh, was a coach at SoCal at one time. And he's taken up officiating as a very uh, competent official, and I'm glad to see him back in the ranks of the official. Our other official is Enrico. O'Brien, and he's uh, from over in San Jose, and he's another young official that's really coming along. So we've got a good group tonight. Zachariah is really riding him tough, up 8-2 to two with a minute and 45 seconds left to go. He was a CCS finalist last year, Zacharias was, in state qualifier. So this is no... no uh, Surprise, oh, Gary's got it, his hands full, but he knew he would coming in. He's burying that half, I'll tell you right now, boy. He's, he's working and Gary over, I'll tell you that. He's cranked him every way but loose. Gio Zacharias going for Santa Cruz Coast Athletic League Championship number three. He's the two time champ coming in. Broke the all-time Aptos record for pins this year as well. So uh, uh, Gary avoiding a pin, which is uh, Zacharias's forte. Yeah. He doesn't, uh, doesn't fool around. He goes out there and takes care of business. He's really riding him, riding him tough now. Gary can't do much down there. He's just, he's just so overpowered, I think. 
Zacharias is a senior. That cost him. Sorry to see him go. He's bleached his hair. Everyone on the Aptos varsity has bleached their hair for this league championship match. Yeah. Well, I tell you, Zachary Ryan works that half person. He really works hard at it. He puts everything he's got into that. I'm, I'm surprised to hear he has a long way. Most wrestlers can't stand the pain. You know, you know, eventually, go over it. Score still 8-2. to two, 30 seconds to go. The Aptos contingency cranking it up. You got that arm bar, he's trying to run that arm bar. But here he's too smart to get his arm out of there. Oh, he's a near side table. There he goes, he's looking back in that near side table. Ten seconds. Wow. Yeah, you got to hand it. Zacharias, the league champion, Dominic Aguirre. You do have to hand it to him. Yeah. Avoiding that pin alone. Yeah, final score 10 to 2. Favor Zacharias. Zacharias winning the league championship for the third year. Three times for the senior at Aptos High School. He was a CCS finalist last year, hoping to win the title this year. Very impressive, Gio Zacharias. Wow, that was a really good match. What, very, very competitive. We're gonna move on to the 138 pounders now. We got Jesse Castillo from Harbor High School. So expect the green singlet coming up. And Jed Kraft from San Lorenzo Valley in the red and black. Jed Kraft has been an interesting story this year. Jed hurt his, hurt his knee and looked like his senior year was completely gone. He went to a good sports medicine doctor and they fixed up a brace for him and uh, he's been able to rest wrestle with that bad knee, but uh, he would have been a real, uh, well, he's still a challenge for the CCS championship, but that knee is going to slow him down, I'm sure, but he, uh, he's still ranked number three. He's a very, very good competitor, and he just got accepted to my old alma mater, Cal Poly. Oh, so congratulations. I'm very happy for him there. Yeah, Kraft hurt that knee early, early in the year. He's been going... Well, and he's undefeated. He, he's, he's had 13 matches, so not a lot, because uh, he could have had 35. Can't, couldn't quite get the arm across there. He looks awful big for a 140 pounder too, don't you think? He's very muscular, long arms. Uh, looks like a big 40 pounder. Nice shot in the double leg takedown. Brought the leg low, that's an important thing. Trying to move up on top of, up on top of Castillo. But Castillo is heading for the, out of bounds. Castillo was a finalist last year for Harbor. In this very final match, Loss, who came in second league, went on to CCS, where he was 2-2 two and two in the CCS tournament. There's Kraft with his tilt. Got that, tried to work that cheap tilt on him. It's going to work. He works hard on top, I'll tell you. He, uh, he really gets after it. He got on bar one side, he's trying to trap that wrist on the far side screen, walk around his head. Castillo is uh, giving him a good fight here. Kraft leading uh, two to nothing with five seconds left to go here in the first period. Yeah. 
And that's how it'll wind up, two to nothing at the end of just the first period. So Kraft, the Apple Cider Tournament Outstanding Wrestler Award. Yeah, he, he, uh, he was a good one. It's a shame that that knee would just dog you as your senior year all year long when you'd have such a huge promise. But here he is, he's in the league finals. Yep, he's back here again. You see him firing away there. Another shot, another nice shot for a single leg takedown, I think. Castillo, Castillo's staying away pretty good. <laughs> Kraft may have to put his track shoes on here. <laughs> there he goes that low single again. He does such a nice job. Hit that low single, and the guy's pretty helpless when he pulls that leg underneath. Scores a two-point take down there. There he goes to so his tilt again. Didn't work. Went through a roll through. No point scored. So he's leading four to nothing now with one minute and five seconds left in the second period. Castillo's the first Harbor Pirate we've seen here tonight. It's our uh, fifth weight class of the night. He's coached by Greg Lopez. And a fine job at Harbor. Yeah, he had. He's got a couple of good assistant coaches helping him. You know. Steve Batisto. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there's another wrestler from Harbor who's not here tonight because of injury. It's Jack Greathouse. He's got a broken collarbone that happened in a match. Oh, wow. Otherwise, he was a definite uh, pick to be a finalist. Yeah. Yeah, that really, that really hurt him losing Greyhouse. He go out of bounds. Perhaps in control here. Second period, 33 seconds left. Top position. Near arm breakdown. Control that far wrist. Fourteen seconds, second period. Perhaps hanging on there. He's not, not letting that thing go. He's, he's hanging on tight, boy. Two seconds. You gotta move up in that position or you can be called for foul. Where he was at, he couldn't make a move. You know, he was somewhat trapped down there. And that's when the official usually call it stalemate, where neither one of them can get an advantage. So four to nothing. Kraft with the lead. With two minutes to go, third period coming up. Castillo's on top, third period. Castillo's a junior, Kraft a senior. Kraft again from SLV in the red nice, and black. Very nice, very nice set up in one point of state. Really nice job. Very smooth, very clean move. <laughs> Worked that front head and arm. Now he's got back on that single again. And once uh, once Castillo turned away from him got, and put his weight on his hands, that's the takedown. His Kraft had both legs above the knees. And, he had everything it needed to. So he goes up seven to nothing here in the third period. Jed Kraft uh, has his dad along at practices. Todd Kraft, one of the assistants, the assistant at SLV, assisting Kenny Polistrini. He's got that tight weight. Jed Kraft is working on that tight waist. And Trying to work across and get that far arm to get his tilt. Trap that arm. And now he's got his vine in. He's going to chirp him over. And he got a couple points there. He got a two point near fall. Now he's up 9 0. Minute to go in the third and final period. I don't know what's wrong with the scorekeeper. They're really slow at getting the points up. I don't know what the deal is. Well, Jed Kraft in the driver's seat, nine nothing lead. Yeah, he's got that, he's got that uh, line on the leg there now. 
and uh, had it in a position, position where it was almost illegal, but we let him turn to the side, and that that really helped out. So Kraft, one of five finalists from Harbor here tonight, all members of the Santa Cruz Grappling Club. SLV, I should say. It's it's Castillo's, the Harbor, one of the five finalists for Harbor. Yeah, Kraft is in total control here. He's got that vine. And probably has his power half, it looks like from this side, I can't tell because we're looking at the back, back side. And he's really trying to turn him here, five seconds to go. And there you have it. The champion at 138 pounds from San Lorenzo Valley High School, Jed Kraft. There he is. He beats Jesse Castillo nine nothing. Both again moving on to CCS. So Kraft, the knee didn't seem to bother him much. No, he, he probably he has it so tight, tight. It's probably making him limp a little bit, you know. All right. Wow. My, mighty impressive. It just goes to show why outstanding wrestler award. The Apple Cider Classic, and that would involve every single weight class, the one wrestler that gets that award. That, I bet's a handsome trophy. Okay, on to 145 pounds as the wrestlers take to the mat. You got Mace Anderson from Harbor High School and Jared Rossiter of Scotts Valley. You know, here's another kid from, from Harbor that's very good. It's just uh, James Anderson is a, a very, very good, very slick on his feet. Uh, I watched him turn people over and pin him and stuff. But it uh, looks like uh, Rossin is going to give him a run for his money here. Yes. Rossiter, whoa! He just bucked, bucked him off. Rossiter yeah. bucked him off. He was on top of him. Mace Anderson's up two to nothing. Rossiter coming out the back door. He's got a two-point reversal. This is going to be a heck of a match. Up there. I don't know what happened between him doing the lead, but, <clears throat> but they look pretty, uh, pretty even Steven right now. Yeah, and the slick moves. Rossiter, the senior, came in third last year <laughs> in league. And Rossiter took him, took him back and got two-point reversal. The score should be four to four. The scorekeepers, I don't know what's wrong with them. They're not keeping up with the match. Four to four now with 40 seconds in the first period. Mace Anderson is up on top. Trying to do that banana split. He got uh, Rossiter back over on his back, but he, Rossiter was able to turn out of it. Good match. Very competitive match. 44 score. 20 seconds to go in the first. He made a mistake and looked in on that. And Mace was able to flip that off the over on him. He made that over. He took up two and two big ones here. Five seconds. It's going to run out of time. Well, that was close, you know. Ran out of time. He did when he should have died, and the score is seven to nothing. Seven four? Seven four is correct, yeah. So Rossiter last year, third in the SCCAL, and Mace Anderson, second in this league tournament last year and finished uh, uh, the top eight in CCS. And he's only been wrestling for 13 months, wow. Mace Anderson. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. He too is a boxer. Yeah, is, yeah. Mace from Harbor High, another one of those kids from the Santa Cruz Grappling Club, which they're wrestling all year round. Oh, yeah. Anderson.
Anderson kicked bottom on the second period here. Rossiter on top there. Anderson with a quick stand up, fighting the hands, looking to get his one point escape. There he goes. <laughs> Did the Montana walk away and got his one point. Now he's up eight to four. Guys show a lot of respect here for each other. There's Mace Anderson over that cross knee pass. Right into the head like that. that was a beautiful move. A beautiful move. I had a, I had a, had a kid for me at Cabrillo that could do that really well. No, there's no defense for it either. Whoa. Hey. Oh, what a match. From How about that? So Mace Anderson from Harbor High School with our three left in the second quarter. Wow. Mace, our league champion at 145 pounds, the junior. Came in first in the Colt Invitational, third in the Apple Cider. So uh the boxing and the footwork for the boxing does wonders. You come in in just a year, you could uh, win league. Yeah. Congratulations to Mace. Congratulations to Jared Rosser, who will also move on to CCS. Now at 152, Jesse Berry in the red and black of San Lorenzo Valley and Nick Reyes of Scotts Valley. Now I think Nick Reyes was the starting starting quarterback on the SLV football team. Who had a great year. You notice the body size and the muscle development in, as we're going up the ladder here. Sure changes, doesn't it? It does. We're at 152 pounds right now. A lot of different schools doing well here. Scotts Valley with a couple champions, SLV, Soquel, Harbor, Aptos. Everyone's getting a piece. You guys are kind of respect each other pretty well. They're jockeying to try and get a position here. And get that over and under here on, on Barry. All your warning called on red. Mary's trying to throw. He can't get that hip across. Kind of a lateral, lateral drop throw here. Upper body. Rebecca Woolman. Nick Reyes. Out of bounds. Scotts Valley's Nick Reyes, defending league champion. Going for two in a row. tried to capitalize on that on the preserved body position, tried to throw a headlock and it, it didn't quite work for him and uh, Reyes was, re was lucky enough to uh, get a takedown on that, or I should say skills enough to get a takedown on that. I want to be politically correct. Jesse Berry up top, two minutes to go here at the start of the second period. Two to nothing. Nice stand-up attempt there by, uh, by Reyes. Going to power out of this here. He's up on his feet looking to control the... Oh! Yeah, that... Is that a penalty point? A penalty point. I don't know what... Um, if the other wrestler brought him down or what. 
Tate got a penalty point on that for uh, what's his name throwing him down hard on his head. His head hit him first. Huh. A little different. Anyway, he's leading three to nothing now, and uh, one, one third the clock stop. The clock stop. Clock. Ah, clock is not running. Clock. Clock. That won't be any fun. You end up wrestling an eight-minute match. <laughs> Two-point takedown. Two-point takedown there. My... Slick moves there. Clock back underway, but they're going to end up with a two-and-a-half-minute yeah, period. I don't think at wrestling I'd want extra time. Yeah. They had one at the table too. They're ready. Yes. <laughs> Bring us up five to one here, a minute, minute to go in the second period. Reyes trying to repeat again. Reyes is in the darker singlet, trying to repeat as league champion. Tried to throw him here. He's gonna, it's like he's trying to set him for that lateral drop. He's going to use him back here. Upper body back here. Yeah. Nice move. Nice move by Reyes. That's, a, that's an advanced move right there. You push your body like that. Step through and trip. Take a man right to his back. That, that's a very fine wrestler. 10-1 lead for Reyes. Should be the end of the second period any second. The clock says 20 seconds. They are going to give him the extra time, it looks like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it looks like he's in pretty good control right now. He's not having much, much trouble here. Jesse Berry from SLV, only a sophomore. He's going to be good the next couple of years. Yeah, he looks good tonight. You know, he's the defending league champion. And all-star football player and stuff, and I think he's really doing well. Yeah, Barry, uh, first in the Wilcox tournament, fourth in the Apple Cider, first in Independence. Yeah, Barry chose the bottom of the third period, Reyes on top. Nice arm crush here by, by Reyes. He got that vine one now. Looking to take him over with the vine. There he goes, he's going to the guillotine. He gets this. Yep. Ray's in trouble. He's in trouble, big trouble. He made a real mistake. He made a real critical mistake on that. I don't hold him on that. Barry working him on top of SLV, trying for the pin. And the big upset. Reyes got out of it. Yeah, that, was, uh, that was a close call. I still don't think they have the score right. They've got a 10-5 right now. Reyes, a minute to go in the match. I think it was a reversal. It was a there it is. They are really screwed up at the scoring table. That's the the scoreboard's got 10-6. Reyes in the lead. 50 seconds to go. We're seeing some real action in this. I just go to show you one mistake and be almost fatal in the sport, you know? Isn't that the truth? Here, Ray is commanding the entire match and one mistake. It could have been all over, just like that. There he goes with the double, double leg turn on him here. Potentially dangerous hole because uh, the wrestler's head is down and his back is bent up, upward like that and uh, officials stop that because of the potentially uh, dangerous hold to, to cause injury to the spine. 20 seconds to go in the match, 12-6 Reyes. And there, Reyes, Reyes got in there, didn't keep it quite, quite deep enough on uh, on Barry, and, and Barry almost rolled him through again. Here he goes. He's on his back. He's got to be careful. Oh, man. 
And the clock expires. And our league champion at 152 pounds, league champion for the second year in a row, Nick Reyes of Scotts Valley. Well, that, was, that was close. I mean, we could have made another... Uh... Yeah. I mean, that was two inches yeah. from a uh, uh, runner-up in league, which worth as a defending league champ wouldn't really yeah. be that expected. A fate worth in death. Okay, now we got Sebastian Mallory Newberger from Harbor against Danny Morell from Apcot. Two very competitive young men. Hundred and sixty pounders. Nice take down trip by the wall. Just move down the right, move over right down to his back and swing it. Dan Velez with a first period pin. Twenty-five seconds to do that. 25 seconds in the fall. Over Sebastian Mallory. Uh, Aptos High School. Over Sebastian Mallory of Harbor. Boy, the senior, Velez, with the league champion. Mallory, a sophomore. Seabass, they call him, Sebastian Mallory. He'll be back next year. Only a sophomore in the league final. But on that one, it was all Dan Velez of Aptos High School with the pin in 25 seconds. Reggie Roberts, the head coach there at Aptos. And when you have 60 kids in your program, you're gonna have a lot of coaches. You've got Peter Maestas, Ramon Zacharias, assistant coach, Gary Thielander, the twin brothers, Ben and Jacob Rodriguez, and Johnny Velez. All the guys helping out at Aptos High, helping Reggie Roberts. Now we have Alano Schweiger from Soquel. Coached by Shane Torridge against Caleb Martin from Aptos. Right. Coached by Reggie Roberts. 170 pounders. Two very good looking young men here. Martin looks like he's the upper body guy all the way. There he goes with the trip, trying to trip. Nice switch to a leg. Schweiker tried to start a start a lateral drop there and found out he couldn't do it. A oh, nice shot by Schweiker. Beautiful, good love kick on that Schweiker. That was really nice. Got the pressure on him. I think he's turning. I think he turned came with Mark Martin. The two point net off. So he's like four to nothing. Schweiker and so Cal up four to nothing with 55 seconds left. Aptos, the deep power coming in. Expected to win a lot of individuals and the team championship. That win by Dan Velez at the 160 pounds, that was his third championship in three years. There, there goes uh, Martin with a beautiful switch on that. Came right around, extended his arm on that, got pressure on the back of the arm, came right around. But here comes, here comes Schweiker back again. He's, Around on top, he's behind him, he's going to score two. Right now, he's going to have anything. There he goes in behind, two point reversal. Two point reversal now, he's up six to two. Swiker was in these finals last year, so he's no stranger to the spotlight at center mat. And uh, just back from a shoulder injury, Swiker is. If that holds up well against Martin. So how about that? Dan Velez there on that 160 pound match we just saw his third SCCAL League Championship. Yeah. And you know he was a he was a starting down lineman for the for that CCS championship Mariners football team. He is one tough little guy. Like <laughs> it on top here. 
Martin trying to work your stand up. Control the hands and get away. And he was able to, Spiker was able to hold it. Spiker leading six. You know, it's going to be hard fought and close. Swiker is currently ranked, he's ranked 16th in CCS. Swiker from Soquel, where uh, Caleb Martin is 20th in all of CB. Martin likes that, likes that upper body tie up, likes to get in there tight on you and try and throw you. He's in that right position each time. There he goes. Oh, he trips again. Trips again and Stryker cut him right on his back. Stryker's going to score it. Four or five more points here. He's going to take the ball. That's the kill for champion tonight. Yep, George Mendoza was handed the championship because of default, but yep, that's the first one fought on the mat. Alano Schweiker. How about that? The senior league champ came in second last year. Alano Schweiker. Evidently, evidently the clock ran out before the fall. Ah. The score is so screwed up here, I don't know what the score is. They, have a, they can't keep the score correct. I don't know what's going on, if it's the scoreboard fault or if it's the uh, people that are operating it. Could, it could be malfunctioning, you know. We've got a minute. Caleb's all, he's a junior. Caleb Martin. That guy's got a patent for a game, a board game. Yeah. Well, I had a minute 10 on the clock. Taking, taking uh, Martin down with that double leg tackle. Nice move. Get that body lock on him. Martin escapes for one. They're going to throw position here. Be careful here. Clark's got 30 seconds. Yeah, the, clock, the, the clock's all, uh, all fouled up. But if the clock is that bad, they should just go with, uh, they have a hand clock here, I think, you know. They, they did say they have a clock at the table, back up. Now, I thought we had a pin. Yeah, the time ran out. And I don't know if that time is correct now either. We got a 9 3 match with Swiker uh, leading Martin. We have the illegal hold there by Martin. Locked his hands over the back. He can't do that. Yep. He's explaining to him what the penalty point was for. 15 seconds in the match. Swiker up 10 to 3. Swiker is Sokel in the blue. The darker blue. And there's your league champion at 170 pounds. Sokel's Alano Swiker. The senior with the victory over Caleb Martin. Whoops. Sorry, Caleb, jumping the gun on you. We had so many clock malfunctions, we lost control of the, what period it was. They don't even have the correct period on the clock. So, Martin, another period to fight back from Aptos.
tussling at 170 pounds, and they look every bit of that. Yeah, they're pretty well muscled up. So sometimes that really uh, can be a factor. Yeah, leverage, leverage is good, and wrestling. Nice, nice, nice. Martin, Martin walked right into that. And Schweiker took advantage of that beautiful double leg. Tackle, didn't give it up. He kept, kept circling, kept circling with it, until he got his points. That was very nice. So Schweiker in the blue and gold, 12-4 lead with 40 seconds to go. Martin, only hope now is a pin. 35 seconds. Martin's back next year. He's a junior. Schweikert's a senior. Schweikert's in pretty good control right now. Probably going to let him go, which he did for one point of state. If he doesn't get thrown here in the last 19, 20 seconds, he's going to get that. He, now he's got... Call for Stalin, backing up to the edge of the map. One point for Red, 12 to 5. 16 seconds to go. Schweiker took a little bit more savvy, I think, than Martin is. There's Schweiker again, working on that single leg. Good match, what action. Both, both kids working real, real hard. And Alano Swiker of Soquel, the winner at 170 pounds, coached by Shane Torres, the new champion at 170 for the Santa Cruz Coast Athletic League. Now we move on to 182. We've got Adam Vega of Aptos in the blue and white singlet, and Frankie Graves of Scotts Valley. Graves a senior, Vega, from Aptos, a junior, more of that uh, bleached hair. Again, <laughs> every single varsity wrestler for Aptos bleached their hair. They all wanted to do That's it. That's intimidating. Yeah. That's intimidating. <laughs> they look good. They look like one big family, don't they? <laughs> I bleached my hair gray. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> Adam Vega from Aptos, currently 15th ranked CCS wrestler. Came in second in the big Jim Root tournament. 182 pounds. Trying to work that. Maybe trying to work that front head and arm. Can't quite get Nick Graves down there. Graves was in that this final last year. Lost, came in second in the league. A lot of motion out there, a lot of pushing. Up next, my turn now. I'm trying to set, it's like trying to set the headlock up here. I'm trying to get his head elevated. Get that head elevated and you can step across. You're, you're going to be able to throw him. But if you can't get that leg across, it's not going to work for you. Again, Graves wrestling for head coach Freddie Cortez and assistant Ken Kinnegard. Cortez has been at Scotts Valley for seven years now. 14 kids out, good showing. Gabby Sandoval, who we saw earlier. Kendall Darnell, Gavin Jacobson, some of the wrestlers at, at uh, Scotts Valley. Pa Raul Ortiz, who we've seen. Devin Gunderson, Jared Rossiter, Garrett Miller, Nick Reyes, one of our champions here, Kaylin Smeested, Frankie Graves here, Alexandra Lopez, Cassidy O'Brien, Sophia McHugh, and Anthony Hines. They got a mob, don't they? They do. Watch out, bombs away from the blue corner. There he goes, he's quiet. And he's still no control. 
First points of the match. Tried that headlock and it didn't quite work for him. He got countered. So Vega then with the two point lead. Knocked out. Oh! Nice, nice side roll. Braden was able to whip Ray Vega away from him to score that one point escape. That was a nice move. Oh, nice double leg. Beautiful double leg shot there by, by Braden. That was real nice. So now 3-2, both wrestlers on the board. Yeah. Mega Braves leading now 3-2. Two. two seconds left in the first turn. Graves on top, one second to go. End of the first period. Frankie Graves, three, Adam Vega, two. You guys both look like football players, huh? Yep, they do. Middle linebackers. We're at 182 pounds. Only three more weight classes after this. It's going fast. Yeah, Graves is on the bottom here. See if he can work up out of there. Oh, he got came right out of that nice reversal. He kept working. Graves just kept hustling and, and Vega couldn't keep up with him and he came right around for a two-point reversal. Up 5-2 now. One forty left. Trying to work that three-quarter Nelson on him here. The guy's got some strong neck. <laughs> there it goes. Maybe it comes out for, for a one-point escape. Four, five, three. Five, three. Graves in the lead. Graves yeah, for Scotts Valley. He's got Vega on the ropes. A lot of time in the period, 35 seconds. It's over. Frankie Graves with the big victory for Scott's Valley. My goodness. Well, that was a very nice match. No skills. So the home crowd loving that. Yeah. Now, I know he came in second last year, but I've got a note here where he is a champion in another year of the SCCAL. Well, how about that? So the senior gets Adam Vega of Aptos, the junior, here to win league at 182 pounds. Frankie Graves. How about that? Ranked 10th in CCS right now. He'll be on his way to the Central Coast section to prove his, prove his might. Cody Bryant from Soquel is up next against Jack Harris. Jack Harris, the number one seat. Oh, Jack Harris takes him right down to his back. We could have a quick fall here. There it is, 15 second fall. Jack Harris from that side. The crowd couldn't even get into the match. It was so quick. Oh, Jack Harris. 
most valuable football player at Aftos High School this year, defensive player, I think. Great young man, born to San Francisco State on a baseball ride. Uh, we wish him all the luck in the world. And, wow. And uh, maybe he'll get a little wrestling up there with Coach Lars Jensen up at San Francisco State. Wow, so he's the league champion in football. He's the league champion in wrestling, and he's on a college baseball scholarship. <laughs> That's amazing. I know. Jack Harris, wow. He made, he made hit a couple double-leg takedowns. He was the champion last year in Santa Cruz Coast Athletic League Wrestling, so two in a row for Jack. Now we're on to 220 pounds. It's Aptos, Adrian Fluffy Galindo against Eloy Ruiz in the Green of Harbor. This could be a really competitive match here. Eloy is, is ranked way up there in CCS. He's second in CCS and uh, number one at Aptos. Galindo is number one in CCS. So you got two of the best kids in the section right here tonight. Russell. It should be noted that Cody Bryant is only a freshman in that last match. That was a nice try by Galindo on that takedown. That was a nice, nice double leg, but. They went out of bounds, you couldn't quite hold them in. I know I've seen uh, Ruiz wrestle before, and he's got a great headlock, so uh, Glendo's got to be able to keep his head down and not let him walk up on him. Currently ranked second in all of CCS, Ruiz of Harbor. He's a finalist last year. Galindo a senior, Ruiz a senior. So Galindo, last year's SCCAL champ, he finished fifth in CCS last year. And Ruiz, a finalist in the SCCAL last year, won the Colt Classic just last week. Ruiz did. I think he's also an outstanding football player. He goes with another double leg kick. He is right on his back here. I think he's just a little too quick and a little too strong, maybe. So, uh, they got the score wrong again, so. Number one in CCS versus number two in CCS. Got him in that cradle again. Working to get that cradle if he gets locked up on it. Ruiz is trying to get that single leg transferred into a double. But his window is too strong for him. Red Roberts almost took the head table out. Right? Yep. He's out there protecting those lads. This is great when you have a league championship with two of the best in all of CCS. Yeah. Not many leagues can say that, you know, they've got the number one pass. The guys are battling, both of them, you know, got real big horses out there. 220 pounds, the weight class. Fluffy is the chant. Fluffy Galindo of Aptos. Eloy Ruiz of Harbor.
So Fluffy holds the lead, 7-2 with one period left. Yeah, he's on top now. He's a worker on top too. He's got the, finally got the, schedule, the score squared away. These two could uh, meet again in CCS championship. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, he's definitely top. Rudy's trying to do a sit out. Didn't play with one. He's got to get his hip down a little bit farther. That was fun, Bob. I don't know if he can power off. Adrian Fluffy Galindo of Aptos, the winner of the SCCAL 220 pound class. He Whoa. Came, he came down from heavyweight too. He dropped weight, came down from heavyweight. And, uh, you know, they had to rearrange their alignment there at uh, the lineup, I should say, at, 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 for the Mariners. And uh, he just comes through big time. Well, I can add that award to his all league nose tackle. Uh, pick for the three-time CCS champion Aptos Mariner football team. And here we go, number 14. That was a fun match. This is our last one, 286 pounders. So Bunzel, the Aptos senior, over the junior, Jimmy Morris of Arbor. Wow. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. <laughs> 286 pounds, only 13 seconds. I feel we got robbed on that one. Yeah, that's one, one way you could put it, huh? And I think that is going to wrap it up for you and I, Pat. Yeah. Again, thank you to our sponsors, Aptos Sports Club, Craft Body Shop, KP Construction, and Greg Lopez. So from Scotts Valley High School, I'm Rusty Reed for Pat Level saying so long, good night, and we'll see you next year.